pasta bakes in the middle of the week are a fantastic idea for a quick and easy meal and it's going to feed a lot of people. Now I'm going to keep mine 100% vegetarian by bulking it out with good old cauliflower. I also want to bind the whole thing together with a rich and thick tomato sauce. So let's get onto the sauce first. Into a saute pan, a knob of butter, along with a splash of oil. Always add some oil when you're frying butter like this so it doesn't burn. And one onion that I've finely chopped, two cloves of garlic, so two fat cloves of garlic. And this is where you can take the opportunity to add lots of different vegetables. If your crisper has a few carrots, some celery, you can add it at this stage. Just make sure you finely chop it. And it's a really good idea to finely chop it for the kitties so they can't see it, but they'll get a good dose of veggies. And that can also go in with our onions. Now we'll just give that a quick toss. I like to add a pinch of salt at this stage too. Now, while that's cooking down, let's get on with our whole head of cauliflower. Good indication of a fresh cauliflower. It's nice and firm. It's not too spongy. I don't mind these leaves. You can actually use them. They're full of flavour, so I'll reserve those. I'm going to cut this one in half first. It seems like quite a lot of cauliflower, but I want to make this for a family of four, even six people. There's nothing better than pasta bake the next day. So we'll cut them into florets to start with, and then I will cut them even further down so there's lots of little bits of the cauliflower as opposed to the big bits. You can substitute this with some broccoli if you like. So really change it up depending on what your family likes. Okay, next stage, just run your knife through it to break it up. I'm doing this because I want to speed up the whole cooking process, but if you like, you can just pop them in like this. It'll just take a little longer to cook in the boiling water. All right. We're looking good here. That is perfect. Now, before we start to blanch this, our sauce, we've got some soft onions. Now we'll add some tomatoes. I'm using rich and thick, and this has some tomato paste in it. It also has some basil and garlic to give this some extra flavour. You really want this when you're making a vegetarian dish. And this is a good quality Australian tomato sauce. So, fantastic for this. And we'll just give that a swirl. We need to season it, so some salt some pepper and the tomato paste is really going to give us that concentrated tomato flavour. So it doesn't need that long to cook. While that's bubbling away, let's get this cauliflower into the pot. I like to start with the cauliflower because it'll take a little longer to cook than our risoni. So we'll add this in. It's going to cook for about four minutes. Then I'm going to add the risoni. Now, you could use some macaroni or some penne if you like. I, however, like to use risoni because it's going to absorb a lot of our tomato sauce. All right, this is looking good. So it's time to add our risoni. Risoni is so small, it doesn't need that long to cook. And don't forget, I am putting this in the oven. So you don't want to overcook the pasta either. We want it to be al dente. So in it goes, a whole packet. And always with pasta, give that a stir just to separate it and then let that cook away. Now back to our lovely sauce here. See how it's reduced quite significantly? That's what we're after. Now we need to make this extra rich because it is a pasta bake. So I love to add a good amount of cream. So some thickened cream, pour that in. And there is a lot of risoni, so we do need at least 150 to 200 mils of cream. So let that cook away. It's almost going to become a beautiful pink colour. Then I'm going to add some spinach. And on top of this, I'll add our risoni and our cauliflower. Now, it's okay if some of the water goes into this because it's just going to make it extra saucy. So we'll just start with a few spoonfuls. I've got a slotted spoon here, so some of that water's going in. And as I mix it, I'll see if it needs some more water. Don't forget, it's going to keep cooking in the oven, so we do want to make sure it is quite saucy. I'm going to turn the heat off here. Let's start stirring this. Just fold that through. It's not done yet. This needs to be extra cheesy so it pleases everyone, particularly in my family. So a good handful of cheddar cheese. Leave some for the top. And some good old parmesan. 
a generous amount of parmesan cheese. We'll also leave some for the top there too. Again, folding it through and you'll see it become quite glossy and gorgeous. Okay, now I'll carefully pour this into a baking dish, very heavy, and just carefully pour that in. There'll definitely be leftovers for lunch tomorrow. Just grab my spatula, scrape down the sides. Just using your spatula, spread that out so it's quite even. Now for some crunch, I love the addition of walnuts that I've finely chopped. We'll sprinkle them over the top, spread them out. Some of that leftover cheddar, sprinkle that over the top and some parmesan cheese. So you can be quite generous again with that. Now I've preheated my oven to 200 degrees and this is going to cook for about 30 to 40 minutes or until it's golden brown. This looks pretty good. And if you like, you could add just a little sprinkle of parsley to finish it off. This is one of those dishes that you take to the table and let everyone help themselves. If you like, you could serve it with a beautiful green salad or just as is. It's a lovely lighter version of a pasta bake and we'll pop that onto the plate. See how it's absorbed all of that beautiful tomato sauce. I'm going to have a taste of this. I just love these simple dishes. Mmm, it's so good. And that is really going to please the whole family and there'll be leftovers for tomorrow.